just to make some stuff. Mm. My hands hurt. Hey, it's Mads and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Spring is here in Victoria and it is warming up. The cherry blossoms are coming out. And this week I wanted to just do something super hands-on and crafty. I love adding new things to a space when a season changes. Right now I'm thinking we'll make three different items. I want something for my pillar candles. I have some shorter ones that are a little fatter. I'm also thinking a new incense nub, is that? Nub, yeah, nub. A little incense nub to put my incense in. And I'm also thinking something for some tea lights. I don't have any specific inspiration or designs that I want to already that I want to replicate. I just more have an idea of the shapes I want and then also it's fun. It's it's a crafty project. So I'm just going to kind of see what my heart decides and what this clay allows us to do. I've never worked with this type of air dry clay before. We're going to make cold porcelain clay. We're going to do a no cook method. I was looking at the cooks and I didn't want to mess up a pot. So we're going to do a no cook cold porcelain air dry clay yeah that's what it's called and we'll make a batch of that and then we will see what we make from it i just want just to make some stuff i don't want to be too critical about it i really just want to make something and enjoy that process so let's get into it all right so to make this cold pressed clay, we're gonna need a bowl, a measuring cup, and I'm gonna use a bench scraper along with these little clips to seal up the little plastic nuggets at the end to make sure they're airtight. To make the actual clay, we're gonna need school glue or PVA glue and cornstarch as our main ingredients. To that, we are going to add some vinegar to make it mold proof and baby oil to increase its slippage so that we can knead it easier. We're also going to need some plastic wrap and an airtight container. I make sure that this one has one of those airtight seals on the inside so that the clay lasts longer. I'm going ratios here and I'm doing a really basic two to one. So two parts of my dry ingredient, so the cornstarch and one part liquid, including the vinegar, baby oil, and glue. And I'm mixing it up until it turns into this like shaggy dough almost. It looks like you want pie dough to look like. And at this point, I'm gonna start kneading it so it can hydrate evenly. It does really feel like pie dough at this stage. And I'm just gonna keep working it. And as you can see, it gets more and more hydrated as time goes on. Then I break it back up and I smush it back down and I break it back up and smush it back down. Eventually you're gonna be able to kind of squidge it like this and it's gonna turn into a more clay-like texture. At this point, I'm going to separate it into different chunks to put in the fridge for when um, we go to color it. I just have them pre-portioned. I'm popping them in their little cling film wraps in the airtight container to go into the fridge for the night. So the next morning I grabbed them out of the fridge and they were ready to go. I'm gonna use this glass vase I have as a rolling pin and this other one as a cut, uh, like a hole punch essentially, if I decide I wanna do a round bottom and along with some acrylic paint to make it the colors I wanna make it. You could use any acrylic paint and really any household stuff to do these steps. This is just what I had around my house. I am dividing up this larger chunk first just cause I wanna make sure I'm not overworking the clay and I'm also not going to make it dry out too fast. And now I'm going to color it. I did decide to color it all at once so that I got an even hue throughout the whole thing. I find that color matching is hard to do. 
um, because it's a lot lighter at this point when it's wet and it does get darker as it dries. So doing all your coloring, if you want them to be the same color all at once is, is the way to go. It's so satisfying watching it combine and go in. Your hands are gonna get a little messy here, but that's the name of the game. The stuff washes off really easy with just some hot water and soap. All right, now that I like the color, I'm gonna start dividing this up, working with small amounts of dough at a time. First, I'm going to make the feet for the little tea light tray we're gonna make. I'm covering up the parts that I'm not using while I'm not using them, and then just fussing with the shape that I want until I get the pudgy little feet that I'm after. The baby oil really does improve the slip without you having to add any more glue and make it more workable and help it smooth out its surface. I did want to make sure that they matched as close as possible, so I just did them side by side and made sure that I liked the way they looked before I let them dry. And you can kind of, you have a lot of time, so you just see that I undid and, and redid this foot. Because you've got, you've got time before they start to dry. You've got probably about 15, 20 minutes of it being before it starts getting crackly and gross. That's why I like working in small amounts at a time and keeping the rest covered so that I can get the exact shape I want and fuss with it as much as I want to without it drying out and getting nasty. And I wasn't trying to get them to be perfectly matched, more, more cousins than twins or sisters. <laughs> and now I'm back working with that larger piece of clay, putting some baby oil in it to get it to the texture that I want it to be. And I'm just gonna knead it until it feels good. And essentially doing this pinch pot style where I'm pressing down in the middle and flattening that out and then slowly stretching it until I get a size, thickness, and shape that I like. I really did love how smooth you could get the surface using the baby oil. You could really make it look sleek. It's not going to stay shiny once it dries, but putting a little Mod Podge or clear coat on top of it will shine it right up. Now that I'm happy with the shape, I'm gonna set it aside so I can start working on my next creation. I'm gonna start making the little pillar candle feet, I guess we're gonna call them. They did end up kind of looking like paws when I'm all said and done. That wasn't really my intention, but it's what ended up happening, so we're gonna go with it. I decided to go with this azul, I hope I'm saying that right, blue. It did turn out a little lighter than I wanted it to. I do add a little bit more later too, but it's okay. I think I could also paint this um, with a deeper blue and I, I would like it too, but I'm gonna see if I like this color for a little while. I find that the best way to incorporate color is to get it in to the point where it's not like super wet paint anymore, roll it out into a snake and swirl it up and then start to squish it and then do that same thing. It incorporates really fast that way. It's pretty, the blue. Not what I was going for, but still pretty, so we accept it. Welcome her to the family. And I split it in half so that I can make two little pillar candle feet. I did put that other half under the cup just so that um, it stays dry and I don't have to whip out any more plastic. I did just use the butt of the candles to make the indent and I did make sure that I wiggled it around a little bit so that it ended up bigger so that I could account for shrinkage because the stuff does shrink a bit when it dries. So I did make sure it was the right shape and then I end up widening the hole a little bit to account for shrinkage later on. And at this point, I don't really have a plan for what I want it to look like. I'm kind of fussing with it to see what angles I like or if I want it to be round. And then I can start adding details from there. I started using this chopstick to make dents in it. I didn't know how many I was gonna do. I just went on opposite sides until I liked the way it looked. And then I added thinner little slices in with my bench scraper. Working on the second one, I wanted it to be a different base shape. So I put the candle off to the side a little bit and made one side thicker and one side thinner. And this is the one that ended up looking like a little cat paw and I'm happy about that. <laughs> I will take it. You can add as much detail as you want at this stage and it will take it and it won't bounce back or flow away. It's, it's pretty sturdy at this point. 
And now I'm gonna set this aside to dry. Oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> it totally looks like a paw. <laughs> At this point, I have made the feet for the little, call it a boat, <laughs> the little, little boat circle. And I've made two of the pillar candle holders. And I'm happy with where they're at. My hands hurt. And I need a snack. So we are gonna take a kale chip interlude here. And I grab my kale. And just, I saw someone on TikTok do it this way. So this is the way I do it now. Okay. And then I literally just rip it up. This is the order of operations for the trick. Preheat your oven, rip up your kale, and then pop your kale directly into said preheating oven before it is preheated. Because what we want to happen is the kale to evaporate some of its water. So while the oven is preheating to 400, it's gonna get the opportunity to do that before we put any like olive oil or anything else on or fat on there because if we put the oil on now, it's going to trap the moisture in the kale and then the kale isn't gonna get crispy and then there's not kale chips, it's just hot kale. And I mean, that seems fine, but I want kale chips. While it is crisping up, I'm gonna clean up my mess and I'm gonna make my little seasonings that go on top. So they're super duper green. I put it all, put them all together, kind of pile them up, and take my olive oil. So, and I give it a good little drizz. So I'm gonna sprinkle it and toss. Now, this part that they cook for, it's about eight to 10 minutes. You're looking for dry, crispy, crunchy, shattery texture. Oh! Yeah. Okay, right, then. Now all we have to do is pop them in a bowl. Oh, the bowl in question. In comes the fake Parmesan cheese. Oh, come on. Of the kale chips. Mmm. Okay. I'm gonna sit here eat these chips and watch an episode of Survivor. And then uh, we'll get back to the craft, okay? Get back to it, I promise. Oh, fuck. All right, I am full up on kale chips and ready to get back at it. I'm gonna take my next bundle of clay out and we are gonna get it colored. I think I want to do two different colors for each of these pieces. I'm going to make my nub for my incense and also a little match holder to go with it. I am using this brown color because I did a test batch with it and it turns out this really mauvey, dusty pink and I like the way it turned out so I'm going to do that again. Splitting it in half so that I get colors that match because I only need a little bit to make the nub and I'll use the remainder to make The little match bot. I'm just flattening it out on the back of my bench scraper and the mat and Smoothing out the top until I'm satisfied with it and now I am taking Extra clay um, that was white and the leftover of the clay that we colored and I kind of marbled it all together and in classic pinch pot style I'm just gonna make the little matchstick holder and keep pressing and pulling until I'm happy with the results. I'm gonna let these dry overnight. Oh my God, it kind of looks like a paw. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love him. I'm gonna let them dry and cure overnight before I seal them. So I will see you guys tomorrow for the sealing. And then we can style them and put them out. I'm very excited to see them. See you guys in the morning. Good morning. Okay, let's go check on the little guys. <gasps> they look so good. Okay, 
they look so good. Yeah, so they're pretty dry. This is a little moisture left in it, but it's the thickest one, so I think that's okay. This guy probably too. Oh, he feels really, yeah, these little guys look dry. <gasps> oh, yay. Okay, and the feet. Okay, now I gotta just clean all the cornstarch off, and then we can glue the feet onto the little bottom of this guy and clean these ones off. I am gonna let them cure for a couple of days before I seal them. I'm just putting Mod Podge on them to seal them and make them super shiny. But we will get them cleaned up from the cornstarch and get the feet glued on and then we can style them. Okay, great. I'm so excited. Boop, boop, boop. This is such a fun project. This cold porcelain air dry clay was surprisingly really easy to make. I was a little intimidated at first thinking that I was gonna have to make it a few times before I got good at it, but really it's just looking for that texture and I would describe it as plush. Like there's a point where the dough or the clay becomes smooth on itself and that's, that's the best point for it to use and I think adding that extra cornstarch on the outside when I was pressing that really did help it not stick to stuff and once I started using more cornstarch on the surface I really noticed way less sticking which was great but for the most part they turned out so sweet it retained a lot of the detail that we put in with the bench scraper and it also got quite smooth on its own and that's like the coolest part I didn't have to do much smoothing to make it look nice like it wasn't rough on the outside the possibilities are totally endless with this air dry clay you could make anything of any shape color or size as long as you mix enough i think you could make so much stuff with it and the, i think the more you work with it the better you get at it and i'm really happy with how these little guys turned out thank you so much for hanging out with me and doing these crafts i had such a good time i make new videos every sunday so i'll see you then if you like this video please give it a like a share if you have any questions comments concerns please leave a comment down below i will be in the comments to answer any questions you have and if you want to see more videos like this i do diys i do crafting videos makeover videos cleaning videos if you want to see any more of that don't forget to subscribe to the channel i will see you guys next week bye hi how are you i didn't notice you hop up here hi want to say hi watch your foot watch your foot no <laughs> very private and very shy. You don't wanna? You hopped up here, bud. You hopped up here.